Hello everyone and welcome to the test launch of an early variant of a T-38 space shuttle. By early I mean, well we're launching on an Atlas rocket, an early Atlas rocket, and the goal of this is for this sort of T-38 to be a competitor to Mercury and Vostok to get, uh, well in this case Kerbal, a person into space first, well, and into orbit of course. Space would have been trivial, and it would also obviously be beating the X-15 as well, but um, the heat shielding situation on this is a big question mark, honestly. Uh, so I, I, I would accept the idea that it's sort of cheating the way I have this. On the other hand, it is a very small craft. And if it had the same heat shielding as the space shuttle, the tiles I mean, I don't think it would be that heavy. I mean, it's pretty heavy right now actually. I actually put lead weights in the tail to make it a little bit heavier than the actual T-38 is. So. We're, we're a bit heavier than usual, and it's of course carrying a lot of fuel in this case, but yeah, I, I mean, maybe? Because the shuttle isn't that that uh, heavy either when you think about it. I mean, you talk about that huge thing being 60 tons, and this is more than 5 tons uh, a dry. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting question mark. But the idea is that we've got Vanguard engines on the T-38's tail. I hope you saw the previous video with it where I sent it close to space or to space, depending on what you define space as. And in this case, we could potentially have built this in, uh, well, 1960-ish and use this to launch them into orbit. And, well, let's find out. Uh, let's not jump the gun. This hasn't made it to orbit yet, so uh, it is not that I know that this can get to orbit and I'm it's a fait accompli, if you will. Uh, we can't really tell because of the staging. The staging of an Atlas booster is weird because it has that those two booster engines that drop off in a skirt. And we've got the whole fuel flow situation. We need to make sure that the fuel is being kept uh, untapped on the T-38 side. Its fuel should not be used. So we've got fuel flow priority uh, to do that and we'll hope that that actually works. So it should be drawing fuel from here. Actually the fuel up top here is actually the fuel that's being fed into the T-38 during launch. At least that's how it's supposed to be. Anyway, so well here we go. Throttle up. SAS on initially, but we will be using Smart ASS eventually. And ignition. And launch. So there it goes, riding at the bottom there. Obviously we couldn't use a Titan rocket because the Titan stages, so you would have to put it at the top like a dinosaur. But this has a much bigger wing. So that's not a good idea. Uh, this staging is incorrect. We want the skirt off first. We are relying on the Vanguard engines to burn longer than their normal burn time. We're basically asking them to burn about six minutes. Not too sure that would have been a good idea. Okay, once G-Force gets up to four Gs, I'll dump the booster engines. Let me check the fuel over here. Oh wait, there's 4Gs. Off they go. We get a little bit of a pitch up, but it'll recover. Yep, the fuel is fine on the... Okay, maybe I need to remind it to recover? We really shouldn't be drawing from there initially. This should be a higher flow priority. Well, right now it's definitely not indicating that we're going to make orbit, but it's a little bit complicated. Again, we're going to dump the Atlas side, and if we recall, the T-38 had about 2,000 meters per second to work with. Okay, there, that one is consuming, and eventually it'll max out our pitch, and I'm ready to turn off the LR-105. Next out. Off it goes. Ah, oh, I wanted that decoupler to go with it. Why is it here when... Wait. It's supposed to go on the other side. Oh, shucks. 
Anyway, let's turn around. How 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 are, how do these things work anyway? I thought I did all the attaching correctly, and here it is. Well, we are, we are definitely not going to make it to orbit, and maybe we should go zero there right now. And we're gonna find out how this handles the whole re-entry thing. I can't shut it down right now, even though our apoapsis is going a little bit high here. Uh, well, it'll be a pretty severe test. Because these only have one ignition, right? Okay. Let's just shut these down. And stage the RCS. Could the RCS get us to orbit? Probably not. If, uh, we're talking about needing 500 meters per second and we only carry 600 hydrazine. I guess we could quickly check if one unit of hydrazine would give us... Well, one unit of hydrazine just barely turned us a little bit. So... Now I made sure to use RCS thrusters that have a high heat tolerance. Um, no, that's not really what I want. And, um, oh, so I added heat tolerance to the decals. Very important. But there are, oh, wait, not roll. Pitch. Execute. But there are probably things that uh, I forgot to add heat tolerance to. Certainly the decoupler is going to blow up. Actually, come to think of it, the commutron is probably going to blow up. Those are not important, though. I did add extra heat tolerance to these octag octagonal struts that are holding the landing gear. That's sort of important and obviously necessary, and that's only because of a issue with how the landing gear handles, right? Okay, but is there anything more critical that I haven't heat shielded? That is the question. You can see right now we just have the hydrazine and we're at 4.887 tons the normal T38 uh, empty clocks in at 3.2 but uh, I think the hydrazine is probably like 0.6 tons around there so we're about one ton heavier than a regular T38 as far as where we might land um, well wasn't there a place to land across the Atlantic in Africa. I seem to recall something like that for shuttle missions, maybe. Ooh, body glowing red. And it's puffing the it's puffing the RCS weirdly. Because oh no. Back up, back up, back up. Ah No, up, 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 up. We have more pitch authority. Oh no, oh no, no, no. Off. Pitch up, pitch up, pitch up, pitch up, pitch up. Oh boy. Maybe I shouldn't have turned off Smart ASS. Ah! Uh, um. Aw. Oh. Commutron exploded. Real decoupler air intakes. Well, yeah. Oh, the Mark 1 cockpit. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's try it again with boosters. Okay, so here we go again, but I've made a few changes. I haven't fixed the decoupler situation, unfortunately. Oops, I didn't want to throttle up yet, but okay. Anyway, um, I decided to add caster ones, which were boosters that existed in 1960. They were on the early scout rockets and also ultimately added to Thor rockets. So, available in 1960, so that's why I went with them. I can't say they give us a huge push. I mean, and actually it might throw off the balance between the Atlas and the T-38, we'll see. But yeah, it's worth trying. And other than that, um, I reduced the amount of hydrazine in the T-38 to 420. And the assumption is that it's not going to have to deorbit that much. And we will try and manage that. It will be just getting into a tight orbit. Or probably not even in orbit at all. And other than that, we're just hoping for the best. 
So oh, I changed the fuel priority a little bit to make sure that the top tank is the last to drain and that's gonna help with the balance. So yeah, here we go. Oh, and by the way, I did already remove the verniers because it wouldn't be any good for there to be a vernier on this side with the T-38 there. So that, that had already been removed. Okay, so throttle up, SAS on, getting ready for this. And on the way back down, I'll make sure not to fiddle around with smart ASS. I'll just let it do what it does, even if it's not maxing out the pitch. I really don't know why it wasn't maxing out the pitch, but, well, uh, possibly just leaving it alone would have resulted in something better than what we got. So anyway, here we go. Oh, and I removed Sepatrons from the Atlas because it turned out that having the Sepatrons on was going to cost us 100 meters per second, which is huge. Uh, but I don't know if the Atlas is going to separate cleanly or not. Here we go, ignition. Launch. Ooh, there is a kick. Uh, I think it can handle it. The boosters only last 30 seconds. And there we go. Off they go. As long as they don't bump into us, we're good. We're going very shallow, is the intention. Very shuttle-like. Of course, this isn't that much of a pie-in-the-sky thing. This was something that was thought about at the time. Not the T-38 specifically, but certainly the X-15 putting it on a launcher. And Dinosaur was the program as well. Same idea. Okay, booster set. Or, more precisely, booster engine set. Um, let's try and make sure it doesn't pitch up that much. That's not efficient. Come on. Well, it's looking like we're closer, but I don't think we've got it yet. Maybe three boosters? It's close. I mean, it's not gonna make it, but it's close. Obviously, it'd be a lot better if we weren't using inefficient engines like the Vanguards. Uh, I, again, don't know exactly what they could have used there. Especially don't know what they could have used that would also burn kerosene and oxygen, which is something that we would benefit from. Okay, we're gonna have to get ready to separate off the Atlas. Okay. Off it goes. I won't even roll it right now. Because we're pretty darn close, we are. I just want to manage that vertical speed right now. Okay... Ah, uh, very close. Um, can we do this with RCS? Let's find out. Okay, I'm gonna throttle down. I want to point prograde, RCS on. We're really pushing it with the hydrazine here though. But I want to do it. I want to make orbit here. And then we have to deorbit. I don't know how deeply we can deorbit and still use the hydrazine to keep balance and everything. Okay, there we go. Accepted orbit in real solar system. So, RCS off. And what we'll do is we'll deorbit around Australia. And we'll just bring it down, you know. Well, 270, let's say. I don't know. It's probably going to skip a bit. Let's face it. It's probably not going to be the smoothest thing ever. But, you know, neither was Vostok. So I'm doing this on the anniversary of Vostok and the space shuttle, uh, STS-1, the first space shuttle flight. And this sort of combines the two, in a way. Uh, this is like a first orbit situation, and it also happens to be a space shuttle. So, yeah. I think it's a good combination of the two to honor the anniversary and everything. The both anniversaries. It'd be even nicer if our two Kerbals came back safely, of course. I'm gonna go with 60 kilometers and hope for the best. I mean, we're barely out of the atmosphere right now, so a little bit of skipping won't be horrible, right? 
Okay, there's dawn, and we are approaching the atmosphere. So it'll be a daylight re-entry. I fully expect to lose the decoupler, of course, and the commutatron, but I'm hoping that if we just keep this angle and get some lift and don't go spinning around a whole lot, um, everything else will remain intact. But as we saw with the previous uh, launch, it is certainly possible for this to explode. I mean, it is not like I've made this thing impervious. Or, I mean, I've, I've given it significant heat shielding, but I haven't made it impervious or anything. Oh, I wanted a physical time warp because it's going to be really boring, but you know what? I don't want it to puff the RCS so much. I'll just read a book. Okay, we are approaching 100 kilometers altitude. It's taken a while to get here. Uh, our periapsis is about to turn negative. Our vertical speed is going down, uh, so which is good. And hydrazine wise, we've consumed quite a bit. I've had to turn on caps lock for the fine controls so it doesn't do too much. But you can see Smart ASS is oscillating the pitch there, but I don't dare do anything to disturb it. And here's 100 kilometers. I should note that there is no reaction wheel on board this right now. I made the RO configuration, well, work in progress RO configuration for this cockpit, and I removed the reaction wheel that is normally there by default in stock. So you can see there's no reaction wheel here, and nor in any other part. So we are completely at the mercy of center of mass, center of lift, and the RCS. And I'm worried about the RCS. Of course, we had to use the RCS to get into orbit, which... Uh, of course reduce the margin to deorbit and come back down safely. And I, I put 600 units of hydrazine in there for a reason, so I am worried about it being consumed. And you can see it's steadily dropping as Smart ASS wiggles us. But we are descending smoothly. And we certainly won't be going back into space. We were barely in space to begin with. At the moment, uh, we're over the Pacific Ocean on a flight path that would take us to Florida roughly. You can see the flight path ends there, though we will expect to get some lift along the way. It's not all drag. But I don't know if we'll actually get there. I think that's Hawaii over there. Let me just double check. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mauna Kea, the big island of Hawaii there. Visible from our current trajectory. Body getting a little bit red here, and the pitch variation is suggesting that I should turn caps lock off now. Hopefully that doesn't disturb Smart ESS too much. Uh, I expect it's going to consume our hydrazine very quickly. Look at that. Maybe it can settle down. It is using a hydrazine too fast, though, I think. We're at 90 kilometers. The vertical speed is basically holding steady at around minus 60 meters per second. And I've got to turn on caps lock again. I'm just not liking the hydrazine consumption. Rather than have it consume so much, I'm going to allow it to not hold as high a pitch. We're at 80 kilometers. Still going pretty darn fast. And hydrazine is only at 38 now. And dropping. One of the RCS ports seems to be overheating. Yep, more than one. We're gonna lose the Communitron. That's the Communitron. Decoupler still hasn't blown off. We will need a steeper re-entry if this is gonna work, simply because it's taking so long for us to burn off the velocity that we're gonna run out of hydrazine. It needs to come down more steeply so it doesn't stay so long in the upper atmosphere where there's no drag or negligible drag. The steeper we come in, the less hydrazine we'll use. Well, we're about to find out how well it can hold itself without any RCS. 
And my guess is not that well. It's not like I spend a whole lot of time balancing it. I mean, it's balanced to fly, but re-entry, that's another situation altogether. We're also about to start going up, but that's not unusual at this altitude. Well, we've got undo caps lock, and that's the end of our RCS. Uh, well, the decoupler blows up, yes. Let's see what kind of pitch it can offer. 25 degrees? That's pretty good, actually. Looks like it can hold 25 degrees without any RCS. But it's tenuous. It's maxed out now. And it's heading back down a bit. And this outer RCS pod is threatening to blow up. I'd prefer it if... Uh, okay, both of them are threatening to blow up. That's better. <laughs> I I would rather lose both of them than just lose one and unbalance the whole situation. And the two intakes are also overheating now. Not a big surprise. They're right on the front there. And I... I didn't change their uh, heat tolerance at all. They are whatever RO sets them at. At least I don't think I changed their heat tolerance. If I did, it must have been like a year ago. I certainly don't remember doing so. But I have fiddled around with this install quite a lot, so. And now the cockpit has overheating. We're at 6,500 meters per second and decelerating fairly well. Now G-Force 0.4 G's, pitch 30 degrees, but hitting the more serious part of the atmosphere. We're not going down very fast, 13 meters per second, and in fact we're going to catch some lift here it looks like. Which would be good, because the longer we linger here, the less we face things blowing up. But it's pretty darn close, looking at this, to being able to balance itself without RCS. So just a little bit of tweaking of the center of mass and center of lift. Possibly some more lead weight in the back. The lead weight is actually here, it's not showing it though. And we can see the coast of Mexico, that's Baja California up ahead. Okay, we are now below 70 kilometers and things are looking very problematic. Uh, obviously most worried about the cockpit itself. Pitch is not too bad, though I'd still like it at 40 degrees, which is where I normally set the shuttles at. There's a slight wiggle back and forth, but I'm definitely not bothering about that. Oh. We lost something. Uh, one of the intakes. By the way, you may notice the Vanguard engine has its own verniers, and that's what you see here and over on the other side there. The forward wheel well is uh, overheating a bit, but, you know, it's all about the cockpit at this point. A big problem is how long we've been staying in the atmosphere. I don't think it would have heated up this much if we had passed through quicker. Well, wiggling back and forth. On, oh, 5,000 meters per second, 66 kilometers, vehicle lost. <sighs> well, still more work to do, but it's, uh, it's, it's getting there. I mean, of course I could just, by fiat, just increase the heat tolerance to things. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I'll let you guys give some suggestions, I'm sure if you want to do so. But there you are, T-38 launched on an Atlas rocket with two uh, Caster 1 boosters. I mean, of course, if I wanted to concede that this, this can launch later than 1961, I could use better boosters and better many other things. But right now, I was just sticking to 1961 technology. And yeah, it's a tough one. 
So on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.